Hello, welcome you all to the exciting world of economics of which microeconomics is a very important branch. Before we start with the lectures, let me show you the course textbooks. First one is by Pindike and Rubinfield, Indian edition is available. This is an excellent textbook, you can definitely read this. There is another one by Hall Varian and this is one of the leading textbooks in microeconomics as well. Those who are more mathematically inclined and wants to learn microeconomics with full rigor of mathematics, I would suggest them to have a look at this great book by Henderson and Quant. This is also an Indian edition available. This course aims you to educate with economic way of thinking or put in other words, this course would like to teach you with some reasoning techniques and tools which are useful to solve some practical economic, financial and managerial problems in the ordinary business of life. As an academic discipline, economics is not very old, but with passage of time, the scope of the subject has grown so wide that it is very difficult to put forward a simple definition of economics which can be agreed by all. Let us focus on one definition provided by British economist Professor Lionel Robbins, which is considered to be the uh, most acceptable definition of the subject as practiced today. Let us look at the definition provided by Professor Robbins. He defined economics as a social science subject. Now, note in this definition, there are two important facts on which we would like to deliberate further. So, now let us look at what do we mean by scarcity and how that is linked with alternative uses which can also be called choices. So, by scarcity we mean that no human society has all the required resources to produce enough amount of goods and services to satisfy the materialistic demands of its individuals. And that definition of scarcity also holds for individual beings. So, Professor Robbins definition actually focuses on this nature of the subject which is basically can also be called science of economic choice making. So, the society confronts with the resource scarcity problem at any point of time with given resources, the society has to produce goods and services so that the society's welfare hits a maximum that is basically the problem with which economics as a subject deals. Later, Professor 
Paul Samuelson, an American economist who is also Nobel laureate, tried not to put forward a new definition of economics, he tried to explain what economists do. He said that society at any given point of time confronts three basic questions and economics as a subject likes to find the answer for these three basic questions. So, now let us look at what are these three basic questions that society faces. So, now we are going to look at Professor Samuelson's work, his three questions. And note that these questions emerge because there is scarcity of resources in the society. what commodities, this could be goods and services shall be produced and in what quantities Then the second question is, how shall these goods and services be produced given technological know-how? The third question is, how is society's total output of goods and services be divided is divided the third question is how is society's total output divided among its members put in other words for whom the goods and services to be produced. Later, Professor Lipse has added a fourth question to this list. So, now we are moving to Professor Richard Lipse's contribution. The fourth question is How efficient is the society's production and distribution? Now, note that here in these definitions, we are talking about society which is basically collection of individuals. Now, economics has two major branches, microeconomics and macroeconomics. The branch microeconomics talks about the individual's problem. So, here in the course, we are not going to look at society as a whole, how it is facing different economic problems and how it is trying to solve different problems. Rather, we would like to see how a particular consumer, how a particular firm is facing economic problems 
and trying to optimize their decisions, their welfare given the recess constraint it faces. Now, we are going to study themes of microeconomics. First, we are going to talk about trade offs. Then, we are going to talk about opportunity cost. The third item is margin analysis. Fourth item is price and market mechanism. The fifth item is equilibrium. The next item would be theory and models and the last item in the list would be positive and normative. analysis. Let us now start with the problem of trade offs. We have already noted that be it a society or an individual, the economic agents face with the problem of resource constant. Take the case of a household, the household has a given income. So, with this given set of money, they cannot buy everything that they want. The persons you know in a household may wish to have a luxurious car, but the income or the wealth that they have, that may not be good enough to buy them a car. So, when a individual or a household makes small, small choices in ordinary business of life. Suppose, you know a household or a person is choosing to purchase egg over mutton then that is also because of this trade off. The same problem is faced by farms also. Suppose, we take the case of a multi product farm, a farm which produces more than one goods and services. Now, a farm also starts with uh, given resource constraint and the farm has to decide how many units of good x to be produced and how many goods of how many units of good y to be produced. The farm cannot make as many as number of goods x and y as it wishes. It is constrained by the resources. What are these resources? These resources are like workforce, natural capital or natural resources like raw materials and physical stock of capital. Now, let us move on to the concept of opportunity cost. Once Another Nobel laureate professor Milton Friedman opined that there is no such thing as free lunch. Now, what is the reason behind this popular phrase? Note that even in this case, when you are not paying for the lunch box, there is still some trade off and because of this trade off opportunity cost is arising. Suppose, the society decides not to produce the lunch box for you. So, the labor, capital, land, etcetera, which had been employed to produce food and the lunch box for you could have been employed elsewhere to produce some other good. So, the society is sacrificing some other good or services to produce one unit of lunch box for you. It is free for you, but it is not free for society. Your lunch box comes at a cost for the society. Think about the friend who has offered you that free lunch box. Of course, that person has paid some money. Now, if he or she had decided not to buy that free lunch for you, he or she could have used that money to buy some other good and services for him or her. So, of course, that person also sacrificed to provide you a free lunch. 
Now, let us define opportunity cost because it is a very important concept in economics. stated otherwise it is the cost of not choosing the next best alternative. So, the point is that as society or any individual economic agent is always confronted with the problem of making choices and each final choice has opportunity cost in terms of an alternative not chosen. Now, let us consider the third in the theme list which is called marginal analysis. Towards late 19th century, there is some upsurge of uh, research in microeconomics and economics and it is known as marginalist revolution. So, what is marginalism? It is a new term. Marginalism became very popular with this book published by Professor Alfred Marshall, a British economist and the name of the book is Principles of Economics, which got published in 1890. This concept of marginalism is now an integral part of economic analysis, it is very important. So, now let us look at what do we mean by marginalism. So, we will first define it and then we will discuss. So, marginal analysis investigates the effects of infinitesimal which means very small change and this change could be this change could be additions or subtraction from a current situation so as per the marginal analysis a rational economic agent considers taking a move or taking an action by comparing the additional benefits of an activity to the additional cost of that activity if taken. And if he or she finds that the additional benefit from this marginal change is higher than the additional cost of this particular action taken, then he or she will take it otherwise not. Now, having studied marginalism, trade-off and opportunity cost, we should also comment that this 
three items or themes are linked with each other. Because there is this resource scarcity, the individual economic agent or society faces this choice problem and as the person faces choice problems or society faces a choice problem, there is opportunity cost. Now, before we move on to the other uh, items in the themes list, let us study a concept which is uh, linked with these three themes and the concept is known as a production possibility curve or production possibility frontier. First, we are going to define the concept and then we are going to provide a graphical illustration of the concept. PPF or PPC shows the maximum contribution combinations of two goods that can be produced with full employment of given resources and given knowledge of technology. Two things are very important to note down that we are talking about full employment of given resources and we are also talking about a given state of technology. In the next lecture, we are going to study this concept of production possibility frontier in greater details.